time. Um, but equally, there can be games where you might not have much sleep, but you really have to back as a back four. And, um, yeah, I think you just take so much pleasure in keeping a clean sheet and walking off at the end and the game, you know, without conceding because you work so hard during the week to do that. And, I think confidence in the moment is, is critical. I think you have to read the game really well. You have to be in the right spot, as you mentioned, physically. But um, the best saves that I've made have been at, at crucial times in the game. And I, I can always remember just being patient. And patience could actually be a split second. It's nice making pretty saves, big dives, uh, big blocks, but um, much in, saves that impact the match are the most important ones to me and give me the greatest, greatest pleasure. Even if it's a simple cross taken at 1-1 and you end up winning the game 2-1 or the game finishes 1-1, then they, they give me the biggest buzz because uh, they affect the match. You look deeper, you want to protect the team, um, especially when you've got a team that you see working hard, you know, putting challenges in, pressing, you know, they do a lot more. Um, they do a lot more running, and for instance, than for the goalkeeper. The mo right, we'll leave it there. Did you like that? That explanation? These are these are obviously pros. These are people that have played the game at a very high level. <coughs> but we all have similar stories to why we became keepers. Yes. Uh, so what's your name? Sorry. Ethan. Ethan, you want to explain <laughs> how you became a keeper? Well, I don't know. Huh? Because every hour was really good and everything, but. I couldn't really run as much as I had asthma and everything. Okay. And plus, I like handling the ball and stuff with my hands. Good. 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 And so, what's your name? Yeah. Leanne, what's yours? Um, well, I wasn't really growing with the other players. Like, I couldn't really control the ball and, like, I watched how like, it would be like, a really hard distance. So, I had, like, goals in the position. Okay. And I could, like, stay on the pitch. Okay, what about you? Um, in six, I got chopped in goals, so I kind of had to put up with it. But I try to be seven and have, have, have like it too. Yeah. Anyone else want to share their stories? Yeah. I was a striker till probably like 10, and then we were, our keeper got concussed, and they chopped me in goals, and I saved, and we ended up winning the match. And yeah, I just like diving in love. <laughs> well, there was a lot of what was, you said was said in there, you know, the, 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 there was a lot of these guys who got into keepers because. They were the, I mean, the keeper that week and they went and played. You know, they helped the team out, just jumped in goals. And then all of a sudden they had that adrenaline rush. They liked handling the ball. They liked whatever it is that ticked the boxes for them. This is it. My one was that I played AFL for probably nine, ten years old. And at the primary school I was at, most of my friends were playing soccer. And they needed a keeper to play in the school team. I was still playing AFL on the weekend, and we ended up in that primary school team winning the best team in the whole of Victoria. So you can see that I've gone, played AFL for a couple of years, done nothing. I played one year of soccer and I win this little award, so that kind of tipped me over to do it. So that was it. So well, good, thank you for sharing, sharing that. I'll quickly go around the room though, and I, I did get on your names, but we're going to be talking a little bit today. I want you to tell me your name. I know you're a goalkeeper, don't tell me the position you play. Um, if you haven't already told me, tell me why. So, start with you. Do you want? Uh, Plane, everything, uh, the whole lot. How old? Whatever. I'm Plane. I'm uh, 16 years old. Yep. Year 10, currently year 11 next year. So, I became a keeper because um, in primary school, I wanted to be like scoring goals, but then because I was so slow and bad at controlling the ball, they just chucked me in goals. I was the worst player. Were you the, were you the traditional fat kid that ended up being a keeper? Uh, I wasn't, wasn't fat. Hey? But I wasn't that's, fat. That's another reason you hear why keepers. You stuck, you stuck the fat kid in goals. I wasn't fat, but then uh, I was just the worst player, so they chucked me in goals. And then um, ever since then, I got like I enjoyed it. Like it was just like it was fun to, to dive to, to for the ball, and I used to just dive, like even if the ball came straight out, just dive to get the ball. I do remember you yeah. many many years ago, time. There was a yeah. lot of energy and not a lot of quality, but we hopefully they've all kind of come together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and there was yeah that adrenaline rush and then um eventually when I became grade five and six and then a goalkeeper a goalkeeper used to be a position where no one wanted it but then eventually when I reached the end of primary school a lot of kids uh, younger kids wanted to be a keeper and then they bought gloves and they were fighting to be a keeper and I mean a popular position now sorry yeah um, so yeah my name is Leon I'm thirteen grade five <coughs> and um I became a keeper just so I know. Yeah, that's 
Yeah. So I can get, tell me a little bit. So do you enjoy it, obviously? It's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So your um, name? Kimira is seven, and she wanted to be keeper just because my brother did, and I wanted to be the better one. Little sibling, sibling rivalry drove you, drove you. Yes, my friends compare me with them way too much. <laughs> Older brother? Yeah. What's he? Is he still playing? No. Ah, see. Like, well, you might, you might have the upper hand. You might. Had one uni game, but that's really. Bad. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pleased you're sticking at it. <coughs> I'm Michael, year nine next year, 13, and yeah, heard my story. Yeah, I yeah, just want to help you. Um, I'm Ethan, I'm 13, year 7, and yeah, I don't know, it's too early to say. Do you play club? No. Yeah, who, who plays a club here, outside school? Which 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 club are you at? St. Norman Saints. Uh, uh, the Gittemore, the... Um, yeah. Oh, I I played juniors there. I was at I was at St Albans at your age oh. before they were Dinamore back in the day. So club Dinamore as well. Oh, excellent. What were they playing next year? Oh, wow, we've got a little group going in. Huh? What were they back then? They were just sort of a soccer club. That's all they were. But they weren't that kind of creation yeah. based club that they are now. Mm-hmm. But we enjoyed it. So who haven't I heard you? Um, I'm Giba. Yeah, my next job, fourteen and. Like in primary school, it was just like chucking balls as well, being just for sports, and we just kept going. It's stuck at it. There's a pattern here, isn't it? You're the last one. Everyone take a step forward. You're the last. Here you go, girls. It's your turn. Yeah. Um, I know. We've heard your story, but yeah, just give us the other bits. Okay. Yeah, good. And that's. And you heard from the pros, so this is not anything. You're not doing anything different that the pros haven't done. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time. However you want to look at it. Got, got put into goals, and these guys have made careers on it. I know for a fact, and, and I can personally speak of this, <laughs> there is that adrenaline rush when you make that save. There is that um, important part of the game that you, that critical part of the game that you make a save that that turns the game. And if you speak to, if you hear, so if you get to speak to a lot of pro, get to hear a lot of pro coaches talking, goalkeepers are probably the most influential part of the team. So again, you can make that save. And we, when we talk at the levels that I try to deal with with goalkeepers, there are critical moments of the game that I need my goalkeeper to make a save. Yeah, one nil up, we're going for a promotion, 10 minutes to go, anything in between the 80th minute and the 93rd minute, I need my goalkeeper to make saves because we've got to, we've got to retain that win. We've got to retain that result. So that's when I need my goalkeeper switched on, focused, confident, what's the word, you know, aggressive, wants to come for everything, they think they're bigger than Ben-Hur, they're God, they defend the God, I need all that then, yeah, because that's when that's when we need to win games, and if my goalkeeper does that, he pulls off one save in that window, that's when you get the pat on the back, that's when the coach comes up to you, and actually, to a little degree, most coaches don't recognise keepers that well, necessarily, unless they were a keeper, that's when the coach goes, man, I'm glad I signed you. You did my job for me, Brent, because he keeps his job. He probably gets a bonus on the promotion. He's loving you. So that's that's what, that's the key thing. Keepers get in the adrenaline. So what we're going to look at now, I've introduced myself. We're going to look at, with you guys, what we call the four pillars. Oh, it doesn't work. So we're going to look, sorry, the five pillars of goalkeeping. Uh, physical, psychological, technical, tactical, and social. We're going to do the first two, then we're going to jump on the grass and do a bit of training around those two. So it's a, sh- you'd say, oh, I've got to be careful my language. It's a poor day today to be doing physical training because it's going to be so hot. So you're going to get burnt out a little bit in the first session, which is why we brought the session forward today. Then we're going to go look at some technical and tactical work later. And then we're going to talk about social. And social we might bring forward. I'm not, I'm not, not too sure. But does anyone want to have a quick understanding of what these are? Anyone want to buy in and have a guess? Oh. There's cheat sheets on the books you got by the way. Just to, for the four of the five, there's cheat sheets in there. Go, Bonj. Uh, phys- physical, being big, or showing that you're physically there, being yeah. aggressive. Yeah, physical, yeah. Uh, next one, anyone else? Someone do psychological? Yes. 
What do you need to be, what, what psychological attributes do you need? Louder, please. The way you think and act. Yeah. Anyone else? Mental strength. Mental strength, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone want to have a go at the technical? The technique. Not you. Anyone else? The way you die from the way you die from the Let's just call the nuts and bolts. Yeah, the nuts and bolts of being a keeper, how you catch, how you dive, how you push, how you kick, everything. The nuts and bolts. Yeah? No different to a player, how you pass, how you run, how you trap the ball. This is the goalkeeping kind of DNA. Tactical? Pretty obvious. Anyone else want to have a crack at that? Yeah. Everything game related, yeah? Your input in the game. What was the example I said to you the last 10 minutes of the game? Yeah, um, who was it said that um, Tim, Tim Howard spoke of his awareness of the game, reading the game, being in the game. That's all your tactical stuff. What about social? That's a bit of a great one. We only introduced social recently into our program. But what's, a, what's an example of your social impacts? Yeah, go for it. How like, your name gets around, like oh, I'm in the game, that's a good keeper. Yeah, true. Um, think actually even into the realms of even not being on the grass, not playing. With, with your teammates. How much does social media play into your lives? I mean, I'm talking about your lives. Or reputation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll put it to you this way. We've worked with pro coaches in Europe, and we get a lot of pro coaches saying to us that if uh, Ethan walked in the door and introduced himself for the first time to the pro coach, he walked in, he says, I'm Ethan. I'm your goalkeeper you just signed from, uh, from um, uh, Australia. The coach will often assess you on the way of, Kelly, just stand up. I'll just give, I'll just give you an example. This is Ethan. I'm, I'm Ethan and I'm really pleased to be here. And thank you for having me out there. All right, or Ethan. Okay. I'm Ethan. Glad to be here. I'm really happy to do the job for you. I'm really looking forward to be playing for your club. Which one's going to progress or project? The second one. Okay. more exciting when you're the second person. So what I'm trying to say is, is that how you project yourself, you know, and coaches aren't dopey. They go look at, they'll, they'll go look at your Facebook profile. They'll go and see what you're up to. If you're out on a Saturday night with your mates boozing every night and doing all the wrong things before match day, what I'm trying to say is that this. This has an impact of how far you go with these things into your career. Does that make sense? All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll go through them anyway. So the first one, oh, this is what we're going to talk, talk about. So we talk about these five pillars. And what we do, I've got the word PFT in there, which is my academy. But what we look at, this is what we become the complete goalkeeper. Does that make sense? You are right. If you look at your check sheet, physical talks about how tall you are, how strong you are, how quick you are, your power, your strength. Brilliant stuff. Physiological as well. So how tall are you going to be? Do we all agree goalkeepers need to be relatively tall? There's a, there's a, there's a gray area on how tall, depending on which country you're from, and, and female and male keepers, there's different, obviously, scales. But physiological, do you want the fat kidding goals? Do you want the fat kidding goals? No, you don't want the fat kidding You want the good kidding goals. You might be fat, you might be skinny. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to project an image of how you want your team to be, you want physically good people to play. Keeper, non-keeper. Uh, psychological, yes. Mental strength, mental toughness, uh, ability to take criticism, ability to make an error. This is your biggest thing. You will make mistakes. There is nothing that me or Adrian can teach you that's going to stop you from making an error. And as you grow, uh, Adam, sorry, Adam, big one. And as you grow, even as people, students, uh, you know, parents, you're going to make mistakes. No one can stop those mistakes. But what are mistakes doing for you all through life? Helping you learn. Yeah. I, I didn't see your lips move. That was great. Hmm? I didn't see your lips move. He spoke. Yeah. You put your hand up. Don't worry about putting your hand up. Just speak. Yeah. Technical. We spoke about that. Nuts and bolts. Yeah. So you need to be a competent keeper. You know what I mean by competent? Be able to do the basics and do them well. Tactical, you need to be in a game. Who's watched a game where the goalkeeper stands under the crossbar the whole, whole game? Have you ever seen that game? 
may not be you, but if you've seen the game, the kid is there all day, just standing under the crossbar. Are they tactically involved in the game? No, no. You can't even get one just yet. And socially is not that. But just to put this into perspective, none of you are going to be brilliant at all of them. None of you are. But where you're not, you need to try to improve. And this is what we're going to discuss a little bit today. So my point is, we, if you, can you see your cheat sheet with all the little kind of icons I've put in under there of what you should be? Okay. So we've got to try and get as many of them, as many ticks as we can in all of these categories. Maybe not so much in social because there's not a lot to do there. But my point is, if, and the more ticks you get, the more competent you're going to be as a, as a holistic keeper, yeah? as an everything keeper. Do we know keepers that are big and tall? I can't kick. Yes. So I've got my physical aspects, haven't I? But do I have my technical aspects? No. no. Yeah? So you've got keepers that uh, love the game, play the game, play the game, love the game. They're technically poor, they keep letting the ball in the net. Or they can't come for a cross. So how do, you, how do you beat that keeper? You just cross the ball in all day. So my point is, none of you are going to be brilliant in all of these. Some of you are short, you haven't grown up yet, or whatever the case is. So you're not going to tip all the boxes. But what we're going to try and highlight today is there's certain things that you can deal with. There's certain things you can improve on. And you own those. They're your problems. And you need to work on them, right? So the first thing we're going to look at is the physical side. Now, I've given you some of these, and you've got a cheat sheet. But can you tell me, even off the cheat sheet, some of the physical aspects that you're looking at or that we need to discuss for a goalkeeper? Throw them at me just... Explosiveness. Explosiveness. Pardon? Eye coordination. Eye coordination, excellent. Yeah. Speed. Anyone else? Speed. Speed. Where would you need speed? Um, running towards the ball to like tackle. Oh, yeah. Running to run to the other, other end of the uh, ground? No. no. So my speed is in what category? In the middle. Short. Just small, quick, fast. I don't need to be able to run a marathon in under 25 minutes at speed, but I don't need that. Yeah, I need to be able to get from here to Ronja as quick as I can. Yeah. Anyone else? It's all right, don't, don't stress. Here's what I got. Physical aspects, height, fitness, weight, speed, strength, power, flexibility, balance, endurance, agility, coordination, physical toughness. Physical toughness, psychological toughness. What's the difference? How do you, um, physical is like muscles and that, like, and, yep. and mental is like finding feet. Okay. Correct. Great, a great example, yeah? You're jumping up for a cross with a big striker. And when I played, no, no, when I played, you think you're sure, when I played, I was about this height when I played senior football, about 16, yeah? I played against a guy who was 6 foot 10. Do you know how big 6 foot, six foot 10 is? And he was built like a brick. He was massive. He was a copper. He was a copper. And he used to play centre forward. So of course when you've got a player that's six foot ten centre forward, guess what you do to him? You kick the ball to him. All day. So I'd have to physically, and I was I was Vonge's shape when I was 16. I was nothing of him. The wind would blow and I'd fall over. So I'd have to try and get and challenge this guy. I needed physical toughness. So I needed to get my body strength that I could bat like a battering ram, I could run into someone and not be the worst off. And that's a lot what physical toughness is. Yeah? You have to dive into feet. You have to go challenge for people that will be bigger than you. And you've got to get that physical strength about you. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> Hand-eye coordination, that's a basic one. You should all have that pretty good. Peripheral vision, what's that? Anyone know what that is or not know what that is? <coughs> Anyone else? Yeah? Like envision that before, like, yeah, like when you're taking no. a shot. No. Close though, yeah? Like the vision of that. <laughs> yeah. So my point is, peripheral vision is what sits on the outskirts of your eye vision. You literally your, your vision. Lana? Leon. Leon. Look directly there. Can you still see me? Yeah. Can you still, that's your peripheral vi vision, yeah? You can still see me. You don't have to look at me. You don't have to see me directly, but you can still see. You can still see me, yeah. basically. Where is peripheral, peripheral vision good? From, think of a goalkeeper in a game in, in, in Marvel Shell. Crosses? Crosses. How? Like if it's coming out of the 
So basically, what it's going to look like is this. One of the great things you have when you, what colour is your, your, your kit for your outfield players? It's usually blue. Blue? blue? You're playing a red team. Do you know how easy it is when you're standing there seeing blue, blue, blue and a red on his own? You don't need to look at the red, but you can see a red on their own. And often <coughs> you do it in preparation for crosses or marking up, you know, because you can pick this. You don't need to go look around and scan and count places. You just got to need to look at, there's a red one at the back post, someone get there. So peripheral vision is really, really handy, and you can practice it. You can train it, um, but it's something that you've really got to understand the benefits of having it match day and having it within, within your game, yeah? All right. Now, I want you to talk about physical training. So we've got the physical elements. We've got these, yeah? How do we train them? How do we improve them? What's some of the things that we can do as keepers to make us better at those things? Anyone got any ideas? Resistance training, weight training. Resistance training, weight training. Okay, so if we did weight training, what would we what would be improving? Okay. Say? Strength. Strength, perfect. Yeah. Any, anything else? Muscle building. Muscles. Okay. What are we talking about exactly with muscles? Because muscles, we can do two things with muscles, and one of them is strength, we can get them bigger. What's another thing that we can do with muscles? I think this is where you're going. Anyone else? No? What okay, about flexibility? Who can do the splits here? Not, don't show me. I and I will not do it. Who can, who can do the splits? You can do the splits. Perfect, Brit. Could you just go up one day and just do the splits, or did you have to? Work at it a little bit okay, to get it right. Yeah. Why can't you do the splits? <laughs> not probably because you don't want to. That's probably I, the first thing. I've got. I'm not flexible. That's my point. Exactly my point. So yes, we do need muscles, but we've got to we've got to work at them at different levels. Anything else? Things we need to train physically. What do we need to do? We've got strength. Cardio. Cardio. Brilliant. <coughs> Brilliant. <coughs> cardio. What does cardio mean? Broadly, what does cardio mean? Mm, yes, you're right. The end, the, end, the end result is that. So if I said to you, go do a cardio workout, what do you have to do? <laughs> Say it. Make your heart beat. It's a heart rate. You're just going to get your heart rate up. Yeah? You know your submaximal heart rate? Anyone know your heart rate? And then you get your submaximal? You've got to work in your submax. So you're basically going to be breathing. You're going to be doing a, a, doing a heavy, heavy load. <coughs> A little insight, I'm not fit. And, and, and I, I have to admit that. My doctor told me, told me that last week. And all she said to me was, go work in a high heart rate. So if I ran for an hour, my heart rate would be coming out of my I'd be dead. Right? So anything. I went play squash the other night. Anyone, anyone play squash? Yeah. With a wall? With a racket yeah, the wall like against it. the wall? Like Mate, I was an hour, my heart rate was going nuts. So my point is, anything, cardio is basically a high heart rate workout for a duration of time. We're going to talk about that. We're actually going to go diverse into what we call energy systems. Anyone understand energy systems? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. And that will explain that a little bit better. All right, so I'll give you these now. So this is what I think. And this isn't, this is just not anything. So goalkeeper conditioning. Now this is what we're going to be talking about soon. Aerobic and anaerobic training. Anyone have any idea what they are? I don't know the difference. Like I know what they are because we went about it recently in Fortshell, but yeah. Perfect. We'll go into it a little, yeah. in a bit more detail. You're going to have to do, do some work. Power and speed training. What, what would that look like? Who said resistance belts before? Resistance belt brute for power and speed. Yeah? Because you've got that thing holding you back and you're working twice as hard to get there. Agility training. What would that look like? Being I can't deny you that you're spot on. What does it look like? Uh, <laughs> running across the goal, making you safe, getting back up. Oh, yeah. sure. In a training environment, what would it, what would it look like? Go to basically anything zigzag, anything lateral, any sharp movements, everything over small distances, quick movements, yeah? Change of direction, change of pace, that's another one. Anything around that. Strength training. 
That's an excellent one, actually. Because I want you to, to tell me what does strength training mean for a keeper? As opposed to a player. So strength training, we said, would be... Anyone? That's a very simple strength, strength training that you would probably all do. If you're not doing it, you'll be doing it very, very soon. Weights. Weights. Artificial weights. Go to a gym. That's strength training. Agreed or not? Going into the machines, doing squats, you know, doing leg curls, doing arm curls. All strength-based training. Because what you're doing is you're just loading the muscle up, building that extra muscle on there. Getting that condition. Right. Where does a goalkeeper need strength training? Arms, perfect. Where else? Legs. Sorry? Legs. Because legs, do we all agree that if I get strength in my legs, I improve at this? Yeah. Yeah? So I get my legs nice and strong. I've now got the ability for greater power. Yeah? Excellent. Where else? Core. Core. We're coming to that. Thank you for that. But no, you're right. But, but you're exactly right. But we're just talking about using artificial waste, strength training. Yeah? The thing you need to understand about a keeper as opposed to a player, so I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that question. Where do players need to maybe focus their strength training on? Legs. Legs, because they need that ability to run. Yeah? A little bit core, trust me, core, and we'll come to that, core is a very overall good thing. Do they need a lot of upper body strength as a player? No. Do keepers need upper body strength? Yes. Okay, who can tell me the three most, I think about this, I haven't said this for a while, Keepers getting injured. What's the three parts of the body they get injured? Hand. Hand. Shoulders. Perfect. Fingers. Yeah, we've all done our fingers. Shoulders. 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 Excellent. Where else? Neck. No. No. Neck. No. Your wrist. And to be fair, this this third one may not impact on you now. This happens. This Back. happens to a lot of keepers when they're older. Back. Cool. You said it. Back. back. Lower back. Uh, yes, yeah, see? Uh, it's because you're sitting awkwardly. Back. You look at the way you're sitting. You're not doing yourself any favours. <laughs> you say that now until you get up. You need good posture. You do. Well, you need good posture overall. In life, so trust me, in I... life. There's nothing worse when you go to a job and you're in there the first day and you're oh, boss, I'm here today. It doesn't work. Alright, so do we understand about strength training? Keepers need to work on their upper body. They need to work on their shoulders, lower backs. You can't do strength training with your fingers to kind of negate the injury aspect, but definitely shoulders is vitally important. Vitally important. There's a huge amount of exercise you can do in the gym with your pulls and your turns to really get the shoulders and that working well. Yeah, I've got a burst, a burst side. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, core training. What, what's the name again? Hippa. 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 I had the same problem with you when I coached you yeah. last year. And I will, listen, guys, you need to understand one thing. I will say your names and I will get it wrong. And I don't care. Because you need... I have indeed. And I will just ask you again, because I'm, I'm not embarrassed by it, because you know what? That's just, I can't remember what I'm saying. So if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. Don't take it personal. But I will try. I will try. So Hippa, core training. Why is that so great? Perfect. Perfect. Anyone else? I remember you said everything comes from the court. It was either you or someone else that said that. Everything does come from the court. That example I said to me jumping with that guy that's six foot ten. Yeah. For me as a skinny kid like him, have I got strength? Have I got muscles? No. Did I did I have muscles? Did I have anything at all that would resemble this thirty eight year old six foot ten guy? No. I can't compete with him. But what I can do, because remember I said I need to be a force, I need to be something solid that when I hit this guy. I don't go flying 15 metres away. That, I'll probably come off worse, but I won't come off 15 metres away. Core is a really good element to understand that. If I, my core is strong, and he can have a strong core, as much as an adult can have a, comp, a strong core. It's not based on muscle density. It's just it's based on just workload. Yeah? It's just, I'm getting that right. So if your core is strong, and, I'm, and then now if I'm an adult, and I've got big legs, big shoulders, big chest, and a big core, I'm like a battery man. I'll knock anyone off. And this is why this is so critical. We use it in challenges and we use it in every day. Getting up off the ground, workloads, everything like that. Core is such a fundamental part. Um, who knows a goalkeeper named Robert Green? Yes. Played for England. Probably done one of the biggest errors in an England shirt in goals in a World Cup. Robert Green 
Um, I met him at West Ham and he was in his later part of his career. He was in his late 30s. Uh, and even Mark Schwartz is a great example. Mark Schwartz played, probably a better example, he played in goals professionally until about 41. And the last five years he did, he did all his training, but he did so much more core work and yoga. And he said that was the longevity of his career. That took him over that edge because he just worked on his fundamental strength. Yeah? That then, and you're right, Giver, from your core, it feeds into all these other bits and supports it. So it's perfect. Okay. Coordination training. Balance, hand-eye, peripheral vision. We just spoke about that. Um, and endurance training. Physical toughness, recovery. And I've got psych psychological in there because... One of the things you kids are going to learn as you go through your career that this and this and this is all linked to your ability of this. Anyone want to give me an example or explain why? Well, on a match day, if you're... Um, if you have Talk to me about a training aspect, please. Oh, uh, well, if... If you've got one, if not... Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, great. Um, so, if you're not in the mood to do the training, your physical toughness or the recovery won't be as good as if you've got a good... Mindset. Yeah, mindset. You are going to have to, and, and this is, let's talk broadly as athletes, not even as soccer players or football players or goalkeepers, as athletes, you're going to need this to push yourself to those levels that you want to play at. Does that make sense? You're going to have to push yourself. We're doing a training session today based around physical, based around psychological. He's seen some of it happening with my senior group at the moment. He's got an idea of what's coming. And you're going to hate it. I'm telling you now, you're going to hate it. You will not like me, which you probably don't need it from now. And I don't care. This is the whole thing. I really don't care. It's one of the beautiful things about being a cop. I have no concern about what you think. Because I know what I'm telling you or getting you to do or asking you to do is for your 100% benefit. There is no problems at all. You're not going to like it. I'm telling you now. You're swearing at me under your breath. You're like, Who's this and I'm only going to give you a pinch of it. Uh, and I'll explain it to you. He's at Melbourne City. Bonjour trains next to where I train on a Tuesday night. He comes over and he watches my senior group do a pre-season session. They've got 10 weeks of it, two nights a week for 10 weeks. You're going to do 30 minutes, maybe. These guys are doing it for 10 <coughs> weeks, 20 sessions of hell. Yeah? Keep coming back. I've got 16 of them. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. And we're talking about their test, the testing on the injuries. Yeah? Put your boxes. We're going to do a circuit. All right, so. We're going to have a quick chat about energy systems, and it relates very much into this aerobic and anaerobic training, which very much relates into all of this, and relates into you being a competitor. So you need to understand, I'm trying to draw, I'll draw lots of lines and dots here, yeah? So let me explain it to you. Do we know what we're talking about with energy systems? Uh, Kelly said yes, she's a bit, a bit of an idea, she knows that there's anaerobic and aerobic, but not sure exactly what they are, yeah? I remember they are, but like I don't. Okay, someone's, someone stole my thunder. We're going to go over this. Okay, so there are three main energy systems. Yeah? These are ATP, CP, which is anaerobic. There's a second anaerobic called lactic acid. And the third one is what we call aerobic. Yeah? So they're three. And really, what you need to understand is this the durations that they work. Now, do we understand why, why the... Okay, I'm probably going to be fumbling around with this. But let me try and get this through. If I asked you, uh, you know, to do diving left and right, up and down, which funny enough, you're going to do in the session shortly. But if I got you to dive left, right, up, down, up, down, how long could you do that for? Three hours? Could anyone do it for three hours? Possibly. Okay, so let me, let me ask you another question. How long is a marathon? How long is a marathon? 25 days. Now, how, how long? Oh, you do 
about four hours, four, don't they? Four, four, three hours. Five. Three hours. Okay. So could I could I ask you to do that for three hours? Could anyone do it for three hours? So it's no no, they're diving left and right. So let's appreciate dive left and right, up and down, up and down, up and down. No one can do it for three hours. Are we exerting energy? Are we physical like someone could run for three hours? Why is that? Why can someone run for three hours, exert a lot of energy and do do we all agree to run for three hours you'd be knackered? Yeah. yeah, me. Because you're using more If I'm hitting the ground with my legs for three hours, do you think my muscles aren't working? As opposed to just stepping up and going? Yeah? Can I ask about your pace as well? More pace and stuff? Even if I asked you to dive left and right for three hours, you've paced yourself. Do you think you'd last? No. No. Okay. Yeah? Because like a marathon runner, they'd be like training. So you're getting on the right track, yeah. Right so mentally prepared? Yeah, look, I can be as mental as I want to try and die for three hours. I ain't going to make it. I ain't going to make it. Because what it is. And who was right? Different muscle groups, yeah? So when I'm diving, I'm using different muscle groups. And those muscle groups need different bits of energy. Yes, you're running for three hours. But the energy I need for running is oxygen-based. It's aerobic. I'm using oxygen. So if I can run, if I'm, if I'm, who said they need to be conditioned? A runner needs to train, they need to get themselves right. If I do all that right, yeah, then I just need to find my energy. And my energy is oxygen. And there's a lot of oxygen. Yeah? This comes back to your cardio based training we were discussing uh, before. I played squash for a, a, an hour, but I was using my aerobic capacity, trying to breathe oxygen in to fuel my cells. Yeah? So, have I lost you yet? So what it is, it's about energy stores. So you're diving, because we're using certain muscles in our body to dive, and certain actions, sharp drop actions, we're using different muscles which require different energy to replenish. So I'll ask you another question, Eva. I got you to dive 10 times. Could you dive 10 times? Yeah. If I gave you a minute's rest, could you dive another 10 times? If I gave you another two minutes rest, could you dive another 10 times? If I gave you another three minutes rest, could you dive another? Okay. <coughs> Why could you do that? Could you dive 40 in a row? No. Well, no. Yeah. Could you dive 40 in a row? If you had breaks in between them. No, no, no. 40 in a row. No breaks. No. If I give you 10 and a break, 10 and a break, 10 and a break. Because what that's happening is as you dive 10, your <coughs> muscles are replenishing. They're getting that fuel back, fuel back, fuel back, fuel back. They get it, then I can do it again. Then we rest, get your fuel back, fuel back. Does that make sense? So if you look at this, ATP CP works at an action of one to four seconds. Yeah? One to four seconds, that's it. The other bit of it is four to 20 seconds. So it would be around three, four dives in this, maybe, yeah? Your lactic acid, we all know about lactic acid build up in our mu muscle, yeah? But the lactic acid is 20 to 40 seconds and up to two minutes. So what would be an example of a lactic acid movement up to two minutes? Now, yeah, maybe something a little bit more <coughs> strenuous, I suppose. What about doggies? You know what doggies are? Yeah. Suicides. Suicides. Okay. So that suicides fit into this. And again, can you do suicides forever? No. no. You've, got a, you've got a window. Who's done a yo-yo test? Who's done a beat test? That's sitting in, that's you, that's primarily testing you at this level. Does that make sense? Of your fitness and your endurance at that ATP lactic acid. Sorry, the, the aerobic lactic acid. So very quickly, this one, endodrine phosphate, known as ATP, is a, is a molecule that carries energy within cells. This is the main energy currency of the cell. They're the end product of the processes of can't say it, adding phosphate groups to the molecule. So basically what it does, it's the, what you're looking for, a little bit of energy in the cell that drives back into the muscle that regenerates. That's what I'm saying, it's one second to four six seconds. Here. And uh, the lactic acid one, sorry, the other bit of this. The uh, phosphogen system creatine phosphate, which is a CP, like ATP, is stored in muscle cells, and when it is broken down, a large amount of energy is released. That's the diving. Yeah? 
This one, glycogen stores in skeletal muscle serves as a form of energy storage for the muscle itself. However, the breakdown of muscle glycogen impedes muscle glucose uptake from the blood, whereby increasing the amount of blood glucose available in other tissues. So, this is glucose. Anyone, anyone knows what uh, glucose is? Sugar. Sugar. Okay. Do you have sugar and then get that big rush and you can go do things? Yes. And then you crash? Or that's what this is craving. So if you do that, this is why this does it. This isn't effective. What you often get out of this, this is where you do your carbohydrate loadings. Carbohydrate turns into, into fats. You can use that. The last one, aerobic, which is based on oxygen. So we've got these ATP, endosome phosphate, CP, which is your cretin phosphate, glycogen or glucose, which is the fuel for this, right? And the last one is oxygen. So in such exercises, oxygen is used to burn fats. So you know when, like, I'm carrying weight, my doctor said to me, I have to get my heart rate up, because when I get my heart rate up and I'm sucking in oxygen, my body is turning the fats of my body into energy that I need to play squash for an hour or to run for an hour or to do something. That's why cardio workouts are what a lot of people do to try and lose weight, yeah? Because it targets the, the fuel that the body needs to do that are your fats. But it's oxygen based. Uh, in order to produce endocene triphosphate, the basic energy carried in all cells initially during aerobic exercise, glycogen is broken down. So the first thing I do is I use my glycogen up. I use this. For the first two minutes, I'm burning glycogen. My body doesn't know I'm going to work for an hour. It just goes, I need to, to get that energy. But in its absence, it goes to fat. Does that make sense? Three different types of energy. Now, what I need you to understand is that when you train and why you can or cannot train at certain levels will be often based around these and your fitness. Does that make sense? So your inability to do 10 dives in a row is not because you're not good at it. It's because you're not conditioning yourself within these systems. <laughs> Am I kind of making sense? What, I've got, what I want you to do now, I'm going to split you into three groups. There's three <coughs> to put your paper back. So I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Go over. You're going to have, go, go over and find your spots, wherever you want to be. Let's put your paper. Some there, quick. Oh. And there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Hey, jump over there. I'm going to hurt my head just trying to work out this. So you're going to give me two examples of goalkeeper training aerobic. You're going to give me two examples of goalkeeper training in lactic acid. Yeah, anaerobic lactic acid. And you're doing the first one, which is anaerobic uh, ATP CP. Two examples. Talk about it. Work it out. Come on, let's go. You've got a minute. Look at the time frame. Just look at the time frames you're going to work in. Don't worry too much about the energy system you're burning. Look at the timeline that you're working. I've got the worst hand dry in my hand. Alright, you've got one already. What would you do as an action that would fit into one to two? Oh no, we got anaerobic and left. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you for 20 seconds to 2 minutes. Yeah? You will do a big one. What training would you be doing? Like it's it's like it's a lot to oh my god! You decided to jump on top of me. Yeah. 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 What I need you to do, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, I need you to think about these. Physical trainings we're doing. Yeah? Okay. I need you to think about these. Are we good for this? You guys, because you're working in, just give me actions, mate. Just an action. A goalkeeper action. So I'll give you a classic example. For one second, what would be a goalkeeper action for one second? Two seconds. Four seconds. Getting off the ground in like two minutes. Okay, kicking a ball. Okay. It's a 20 seconds. Is that right? Kick a ball. It only takes a second or two to kick a ball. Yeah? But again, if I asked you to kick 25 footballs in a row, you're going to be mad. So your kicking action, you can do one, you can go back, have a bit of rest, do another. You get 20 with a bit of a rest, right? Okay, you've got to give me one more because you've got three of you. 
Do you write something else in here? In the 4 to 20 second ratio, okay? Why do you sprint high? Why you sprint high? Yeah. Are you sprinting from close to close? Kind of the example I was giving you, you would do it perfect, yeah? I've got it, I've got it down there, any, anyway. Come on, think of, think of something else, another move. You have to go like four boxes. You have to jump. Shuffling across the goal. On top, like, what? That's wild. That's called shuffling. All right, we've got ten more seconds. Are you just hard? Oh my god, he's fighting. He's fighting. Don't worry. One second, we good? It's the same thing. Do I need more time? You're not stepping, you're shuffling. Oh my god, You're that? shuffling, you're not... Now we're into the brutal ones. Between... Oh, we've got, Miss, we've got the uh, brutal professional one. professor of English. You might have a bit of an insight into this thing. Yeah, because I'll see what... Alright, yeah. very quickly, let's go. We'll what? start with you. Really what the... Listen up. Listen up, please. Uh, Give me some aerobic. Yeah, Ethan. What? what? No, you got one each, so don't worry about it. You can dob him in now, but you're still going to do one. Oh, what do you got? Push up. Oh, listen, guys, we need to listen because we're all, we're, all, we're all involved in this. So, aerobic training, push ups. Anyone want to comment on that? What energy system are you using for push ups? Your muscles. Glucose. You're not using oxygen. So, maybe not push ups. Any, anything else? Dude, I can't breathe, that's why. Yeah, I can't help you with that right now, let me just say. <laughs> well, you guys think about it. We'll come back. You guys. Frost. Uh, Keep it on boxes for boxes? the glucose because you're jumping up and down. Okay, so muscles. what type of training is that if we call jumping? Anyone know? Or Starts with the word P. <laughs> jumping. Jumping. Jumping jacks. Wow, Ethan. Plyometric Wait, training. It's called ply jumping is plyometric training, yeah? But oh, okay, that's fine. Um, now, if I jump, just to give you an example with uh, Mr. Bonji here and Eva. If I jumped up once and walked away, am I working that energy system? No. Not because you're not. You, your heart rate's not going up. It's not really based around heart rate. Mm -hmm. This one, this one is not based around heart rate per, per se. Yeah. Although, if you do it, your heart rate will go up. Don't get me wrong. But what you're trying to train is the glucose. So you're using the glucose in your muscles. So my point with that is, is that it doesn't matter about the oxygen intake. It's about the timing that you're doing it. So if you were to do this for one minute, as, as an example, that falls into that category. If you're doing box jumps for one minute, you are going to be working this energy system. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I did a box jump once, I'm working this energy system. Oh. Yeah? And I could not work this energy system on box jumps because so there's no way known I could work three, four minutes. Well, you could, the upper end athletes could, but there are better ways to to work this system. Ross could do it. Did you want to sit on a chair? Yeah. Roy, Ross could do it. Are we good with this? Yeah. So am, I, am, I, am I making sense here? Yeah. Okay, so you've got box jumps, what else? Uh, uh, probably the diving as well, each side. How long? So uh, you, you ten, guys are always going to work time these seat. time frames or quantities for to, about to work this system. 30 seconds. Yeah, what's going to fall into that? Perfect. Left and right. Perfect. So we're going to go do stuff on the grass after this. We're working in here. You're doing 30 seconds on, 30, 30 seconds off. Training on a circuit. Yeah? Five different stations, in and out. For 30 seconds, you're going to be dead. I'm telling you now. Yeah? But we are working this system. We're going to try and train you in this system. All right. Uh, you guys, what have we got in the ATP CP system? What have we got? Again, you're going to come to me with this. How many are we doing? Uh, two of them. Ten. 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 This is a movement, a goalkeeper specific movement you would do within that ratio. Only a second to four second kicking. That's fine. But bear in mind, it's the rest periods you need to go back and repeat the task to give your, your body the ability to refuel the muscle groups it needs to do the task. Yeah? Make sense? 
And the third one you had was shuffling. Yeah, shuffling. Again, it would be shorter distances, sorry, shorter time frames to do that, to fit into that, yeah? Used to, back to you. Aerobic training, give me an example. Agility? Agility. I have no idea. Okay. Running. We go back to these. Yeah? It's okay, run. Which one of these is really working in the aerobic category? Is core training aerobic? <coughs> are you burning oxygen? Are you really trying to get your heart rate up doing core? Yeah. yeah. For long periods of time? Yeah. No, you're talking garbage. All right. Anyone else? Power speed training? What's power speed training? Is it usually long distance or short, sharp stuff? Short, short, short sharp. sharp. Yes. Yeah. Uh, strength training? You're on the gym, you're on the weights? Short, sharp or long? Short, sharp, you're doing reps of 10, you're out. Reps of 5, you're out. Yeah? So basically what I'm going to cut is this. Endurance training. I had that done Yeah, of course you did. Of course you did. Quickly write it down before I get there. Hurry up. Okay, give me an example of the group. Give me an example of endurance training that would be aerobic based. Oh. Um, you would do it as pre-season. 3K runs. Drop of a drop of a hat. 3K runs. 3K runs. Perfect. If you ran 3Ks, would you be breathing? No. Would you, okay. would you need to breathe? Yes. Okay, you need to breathe. And when you're breathing, what are you breathing in? Oxygen. Oxygen. Would your heart rate be up? Yes. Oh yes, would the heart rate be up? So, what what would be another one? What's another type of endurance training aerobic based? Who swims? I used to. Okay. If you swam five thousand meters, uh, yeah, two thousand meters, hundred meters, and again, you're burning oxygen those longer distances. Marathon run, run. Who likes to cycle? Who likes to cycle 50 k's? No. 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 Again, we are working this stuff. Yes. Aerobic base. You need oxygen to refuel. That's what it's all about. Oxygen, 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 oxygen. Yeah. For your longer distance stuff. All right. Go sit back down. That was great, guys. Thank you for that. Oh, so this is what we're doing now. This is what you did. Yes? Yeah? So I'm going to give you this now. This is... This is, again, part of my academy. All my goalkeepers at this time of year. Okay. Unfortunately, bunches on the cover. Now, all my goalkeepers... All my goalkeepers, this time of year, my junior keepers, at Christmas time, they get this. This is an eight-week pre-season program for them to do in their own time. If you look at the first, go back to page one. Look at part A. What is it? What's part B? Anaerobic fitness. And part C is goalkeeper-specific conditioning training. Now, this is for you to keep. This is for you to, and I would really hope over the summer you could use it because it will prepare you, particularly you going over to Madrid in January, and uh, but you're training, you're probably doing enough training as it is, but for you guys in preparation for 2020, coming back in January or early Feb, this is perfect for you to work on. Now, if you go back to the next page, what it basically looks like is this. It explains to you in this program that you are going to do anaerobic training. Uh, so you're going to do aerobic runs. And I've got, I've got you doing 1.5K runs three times a week for two weeks. That's your first two weeks. It's, it's, it's eight weeks, yeah? Then I think you go to two, 2.5, and then three. So that's a two week, two week, two week, two week. So I'm, I'm loading your running. Does that make sense? I'm pushing this. I'm pushing it. Yeah? Load it, load it, load it. Do we, do we know what loading is? Yeah. Do we all understand the concept of loading? Yeah. If I got you to do 10 dives for two weeks, if I kept doing 10 every week, are you going to improve your fitness at that? No. So then we go to 12. Then we go to 15s. And then we go to 20s. Can I start you at 20? No. 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 I'm going to start and then we build up. That's loading. Loading is just doing something and then adding a little bit more. When we speak about this, ah. Oh, when I say to you next week, you've done 10, you're doing 15, 
which part of your body, which two parts of your body have to get over that quickly? And your physical. Your physical side's got to, got to get over it. Your brain's got to get on board. Well, no, they, your physical part would need to get over doing the dives. No. No, no, no doubt, no doubt. But nevertheless, at the end of the journey, you still got to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Remember I said these two link very, very closely. So then we do anaerobic training. So in the anaerobic, don't worry about the technical training because you're not doing that. In the anaerobic, that's what these are. I've gone and found all these exercises you can do that are anaerobic based. And I've given you reps. And I've given you rest periods. And as you'll probably see if you look through it, yeah? Your every week, your reps go up and your rest becomes less. Does that make sense? It's a double whammy trying to kill you. But as you're training, that's how we improve in this. Am I trying to make sense here? This is how we improve our, our energy system to better help you. Yeah? This is how it works. You do something, in, this is why an outfield player can't be a keeper. Because even though you're not maybe brilliant at this now, an outfield's got nothing. Does that make sense? They've done no conditional training in these areas at all. This is why you, uh, goalkeepers do nothing. Come in and dive 10, 10 times. They'll last three because their energy system can't cope. Likewise, if they say to you, we need you to play on the weekend, you've got to run around for 90 minutes. Do you reckon you're, do you reckon you're conditioned enough in this area to yeah. do it? Yes. You get my gist, yeah? You wouldn't do it as well as them. Oh. Okay. Does that make sense? So your energy system, I'm not teaching them this, this is probably maybe a bit advanced for you guys, I don't know. I think it shows a lot of respect for where you guys want to go. So you need to analyse a little bit your training regime and what you do. And then when you say, I had this argument with the keepers in my academy, yeah? And I'll say, Bonja, he's got the gear at you and Green Gully instead of you because he works harder and he's trained himself better in these systems. Yeah? You are lazy. You don't want to work hard, he should get the rewards because he does. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is why I teach my kids this, because they own the problem. Yeah? Don't come to me and say, oh, I didn't get the job at Gully. You know why? Because you're lazy. And the kid that got the job probably works harder than you and has done more work and prepared himself better. Yeah? All right. Now, any questions about physical aspects of a keeper? Remember, we're talking about the pillars. Yeah, first pillar done. We're going to move on to the second one. Any questions about physical? Anything else you want, you want to know? You've got a lot of information there. All right? Okay. Psychological. Questions. How can we improve our psychological aspects? Well, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. I've gone too far. Give me examples of psychological aspects of a keeper. Bonja. Uh, say we... One. Just one, one. Just one example. One word. Mental. Mental. Yeah. Anyone else? Determination. Perfect one. Love it. Anyone else? I'm hoping this should roll off the tongue very, very quickly. Persistence. Persistence. I love it. Okay, I'll, get, I'll show you what we've done. Do you want to read them out to you? Winning mentality, presence, enthusiasm, focus, ownership, intelligence, dedication, attitude, honest, commitment, courage, body language, self-reflecting, self-esteem, goal setting, desire, resilience, visual, confidence, humble. Humble? Yeah, humble. You can be humble. Do you need to be humble? Not necessarily, but you can be. Am I allowed to swear in this, in this, in this room, in this group? Yes. Do you all know that goalkeeper is a real dick that yeah. thinks he's better than everyone else? Do we all know that guy that you see and he struts into the field? And he's... Do we, have we all met that person? Liam. 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 Okay, I don't know who Liam is, but yes, we all know someone like that. Oh, My amazing. point is, you should always be humble. You should always be humble. Yeah, you could be the best. Yeah, you could be taller than everyone else. You could be whatever, but you still got to be humble. Not just to be humble outside the field or on the field. We've, we've got this set up as a, very much like this, like a, a manual to give to our keepers. And it's funny you say that, because we've got our psychological aspects of the keeper into five categories. 
in training, pre-match, match, post-match, post and just everyday life. Does that make sense? You really should carry a lot of these, I mean, I don't know you guys, and you can do whatever you want, but I believe as good people, you should carry a lot of these elements in your whole world. Yeah? In your whole world. Dedication, resilience, um, I can't Commitment. Does this all not relate to schoolwork? Yeah. Not, not goalkeeping. You guys are going into VCE and really big exams, future changing stuff in your life. You've got to have a lot of this stuff. So I've got to go humble, concentration, bravery, leadership. I love that one. Discipline, self motivating. Never want to concede and mental toughness. Anyone else want to add anyone? This is, this is stuff that I've just brought up, so I could have missed something. Anyone got anything else? Is they using feedback? Pardon? Is they using feedback? Using feedback. We have self-motivating. Um, Who's the other one we have? Self-esteem, self-reflecting. Yeah. This is what I own, not what people are telling me. This is what I, I own. There's ways we can improve on it. So I'm going to touch on a couple of these. In my academy, this is a very important one. Focus or ownership? Ownership. Oh. Ownership. Why is ownership important? Yep. To be aware, like, oh, I can steer the goal at my fault, but like, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Take ownership for your own like, training action. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Whose career is it? Your Mine or yours? Your career. It's your career. So you own it. You own your career. Not not me. And, and again, with all due respect to your parents, I hope they're the one that you have you met those parents that are living their career through their kids? Yes. You know, be the parents yes. that are pushing their kids all the time and it's their oh, career but they're trying to project it through their children. The kids don't own that. The kids don't own that career. It's mum and dad that are just kicking them through life. My point is with that. And we're going to cover a little bit of it today. Um, if I show you some way, way I work, yeah? I'm training you. If you technically do something wrong, I say to you, Hibba, look, when you die, I need your hand behind the ball and a hand on top for a low safe. You didn't know that before I told you. Once I tell you, who owns that? You. I've done my job as a coach. I've identified it. I've shown you how to do it. I've replicated it. I've demonstrated it. Now that problem which I've identified in you and I've given you the answer, that's totally yours. And you can do one of many things with that. You can either keep going home and practicing it and improving it. Yeah, I've got to work on that because you know it's a problem. Or you could go, I don't care. I'm not going to do anything with that. Which one do you think is going to give you the better outcome? And as a coach, once I show you and you own it, it's not my problem anymore, is it? So when we train next time and you make that same uh, error, what am, what am I going to say? I've shown you. Why aren't you fixing it? Does that make sense? So I think that ownership one's really important. Um, the other one I want to get out of you is self-reflecting. And you spoke about that before. Yes, we're going to, there's many ways you can improve your psychology and you can um, go to other people. How do you think I played today? Do you think I did well? Do you think I did okay, do, do, do. But what I need you to do with this is to understand many things. One is, where do you fit in the world? Are you putting too much pressure on yourself thinking you should be playing for Barcelona seniors at 15, playing a kilo down secondary college? Damn right. Yeah? So can we all say, understand where we fit in the world, so we're not trying to overachieve ourselves and falling short, and we're not underachieving ourselves and not pushing ourselves hard enough. You need to understand where you fit in the world. And that's not doubting the fact that Bond is at Melbourne City now, Credit to him because he deserves it. But does does one just walk around going, oh, I've been done. I've done it now. I'm succeeded. This is it. No, he's got to understand. I am just one little step in these 55,000 steps to get somewhere in my career. And the sad thing, even when you look at your Buffon's keepers as well, you know Buffon. Okay, I don't think I've really. He's played for Italy 500 times. He's 41, he's still playing professionally in, in, in Italy, right? For your performance as well, any golf, it never ends. It never ends. This top of the tree, you'll never get there. 
because it's the great keepers that continually push that bar a little bit higher and try to succeed a little bit more. Does that make sense? It never ends. It, it never ends. I've had so many keepers left me to go to Melbourne City or Victory and you never hear of them again because they've gone, oh, I've made it. But no, there's three other kids that have now pushed that bar a bit higher and, it's, and surpass them. All right, so can we improve our psychological aspects? Give me some examples. Anyone? Tolerance. Say again, this is where you, you came in. Huh? Exactly what you said before. Tolerance. How do we improve that? Uh, you said it before. Getting feedback from someone. Oh. Talking to someone and saying, listen, how do you, but do you just go ask anyone? No. Do you ask, okay, here's a good question for you. Broad question. Who believes their parents love them? And will do everything for them. Who believes their parents will probably lie to them just not to upset them? All the time. <laughs> no, but I ask them. Well, I no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They will still they will still try to do it. So my point is, if you're going to ask for feedback, should you go to your parents and say, do you reckon had a good game today? No. Mum and Dad, they'll go, brilliant! You were honking. Yeah? You were horrible. Yeah. So maybe you need to find that mentor or that person of confidence you know, maybe it's a coach, maybe it's not a coach, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's someone, but maybe that's the person you should be going to. If you keep getting feedback from the person that always gives you positive, you're really not going to get... Do we all agree we need to know bad news? Yes. Do we, 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 there's no point living in unicorn land and rainbow land. It's just not going to help you at all. Having said that, you shouldn't be like me when I coach and be an absolute bastard all the time. But you'll come to find that when you get on the grass very soon, by the way. Okay, so this is what I've said. How can we, can be, we can focus. We can improve our focus. We can concentrate more. We can put our uh, minds into this. Yeah? I have this situation. You come train with me, Kelly, at my academy for 90 minutes. I own your brain for 90 minutes. Don't sit there and start talking to him about this. I did this last night. Go find your friend on Facebook and chat all you want. 90 minutes, I own you. Your brain is here, you're working hard, that's it. Non-negotiable, yeah? Now, I force that, but you should be bringing that to my session no matter what, yeah? Being honest, we said that before. Am I the best keeper in the world? No, I'm not. Be honest, what do you need to improve? Self-reflection, look in the mirror every now and then. What can I do to improve? How can I get better? Belief in your own ability. Yeah, you could not be very good, but believe in what you can do well. Yeah? Don't throw everything out just because you're poor at an A of one thing or two things. Look at what you do well. Now, having said that, if you know what you're doing wrong, or what, no, it's up to you to improve those. Yeah? Yes or no? Yes. If you know what they are, then they're your problems. They're not anyone else's problems. So you can work on them and improve them. Self-assessments with the S slightly off from the T for some reason. But let's not worry about that. Now, we do... Two things, you can find a confidant or a mentor and ask them what do you think, how do you think I'm going, what do I need to improve, or you can do it yourself. You can start to really reflect on your own game. Did I play well? Did I do well? Did I do everything I was supposed to do? And we have self-assessment sheets that we give our keepers. We do this very much at the start of our journeys where they keep the work. We want to know whether they think they're already Matty Ryan and they're 13 years old, they're playing in the whatever B squad. We need to understand what they think of themselves before we can push on. Yeah. Understanding what you need to improve. That's what we are talking about before again. You own these problems. You need to understand it. Uh, you should be, if you want to take notes on these, or if you should, you should be keeping a book with you, with all your notes and your training sessions. Didn't kick too well today. Got to practice the left foot. Got to practice the left foot. Got to practice the left foot. Whatever you need to keep adding into that to use as your journal for your journey as a keeper. Knowing the structures and the pathways of your development. So your your ability, uh, Kelly, at Dinamore could be, is there an, sorry, is there an A and a B team? No, just A's. And you're playing what next year? Under 16. 16. Under 16, right? Your, your, your um, pathway could be, I know I want to play under 18s, or sorry, under 18s will get into the senior, senior squad by 2021. So that will give you some motivation for 2020, to do all the things you need to do to achieve that goal. Yeah? Discussion with mentors and coaches you trust and can commit. That's why I said before, don't ask your parents. They'll lie to you. They always lie. 
and I'm a parent. I can say that with all honesty. But you understand what I'm saying? Find the person that can give you some honest feedback. Anything else you can think of? Any other psychological things that we should be, or you think you can help to improve? I, I've actually missed one. I've got one. I just remembered as I was talking to you guys. Very easy. Goal setting. Where do you want to be in 2021? Where do you want to be in five years' time? Yeah? Where do you want to play in two years' time? You should be already now setting goals. Just to let you know, who wants to play at the highest level they can play? Who would love to be pro? Who would love to do all that stuff? Hey, look, drink. Please drink. We, we, let's jump into unicorn land now. Yeah, drink. Where do you want to play? Where do you want to go? Yeah. All right. So for men's, females, I'm not 100% sure. For men's, your first platform you need to be very, very good at is 15. Ethan, how old are you? 13. 13. Perfect. 13. 13, perfect. Yeah? See you old. Boom, boom. At 15, there are all these pathway opportunities. Now it's changed a little bit with Melbourne City and Melbourne Victory because they've now got NPL and they've got kids in from 13. But it used to be they took kids in at 15. A-League, yeah? So A-League took the keepers in. They had their first look at keepers at 15. There was something called the AIS, which no longer exists. Anyone know what that, that is? Yeah, in the the they used to take a scholarship program in there. The big one is, in the UK and Europe, their scholarship system starts at 15. Now, over there, they take kids in as... They take them in at 15. They are uh, professional. They're like apprentices. They, they spend two years as a scholar. In that, they train every day of the week. They get to study. And they go from 15 to 17. Yeah? And, then, and I'll just give you... Our next platform is this. So that's where you fit in now. But they basically train it for two years, yeah? And then from here, they go pro. Or they don't go pro. But they've got two years to improve and to really focus on what they want to achieve. So Ethan, if I go to you, yeah? Goal setting for you might be, I want to get to this first platform at 15 to have these opportunities. And if you've missed that, in your case, then you're going, I want these opportunities. If you go to the UK or Europe, you can sign as a pro at 18. Okay? Simple as that. Many opportunities happen here, even in local football, to play seniors. And I was, I was talking um, to, to Andy before you guys come in, he was saying that the last year he was at Canley playing some reserve football. That could be his goal. I want to be a senior keeper at Canley by the time I'm 20. It doesn't matter. Goal set. Set your goals. Yeah? There's my goal. And then work out what you've got to do from where you are here to achieve it. Work it out. Work it out. Talk to your mentors. Talk to everyone. Get all the details you need. Work out what you need to get from there to there. If that's your goal. Yeah? Could be taking his spot in the or his spot in the senior squad, Ethan. Sabotage. Take this spot. I want I want his spot. It's a goal and there are steps to achieve that goal. Is this relevant to life? What do you want to study, Hibba? Uh, what do you want to do? Uni course. No. Anyone? No. Lena? You? To do what? Uh, Just to go to Monash? Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Good. Kelly? Uh, uni? No. Listen, it's alright not to know, but I'm not trying to put you under pressure. But if you do have that desire, if you do have that goal, if that's what you want to do, in your case, you've got to pick certain subjects over the next couple of years to achieve that. If you do arts and all this other stuff, that ain't going to get you there. No different. Career. If you want to be an engineer working for a big company, if you want to work for NASA, there's, there's one. Great goal. You've still got to be able to do lots of this stuff. What you study, where you work, networking, whatever it is. All right? Okay. I'm going to show you something psychological. It's a tool. I'm going to show you this very quickly, then we're going to go jump on the grass and muck around for a bit.
You guys remember recess? That's why you need to bring your phone. Do you guys need to go to recess? And I don't mind, we can cover this when we get back. So here's a psychological tool that we've introduced called the theory of one. Alright, I won't, uh, I'm just going to jump out of this and jump into something else. We'll jump on the glass, mate. I'm definitely going to jump on. Okay. While we're bringing this in, pause, yes. Okay, so whilst. Lana? Lana. I'll get it right eventually. While she's done, anything you want to ask about the first two topics that we've discussed? Anyone? What I'd like you to do as well, and we'll show these a little bit later on, once we start looking at this stuff again, once we start looking at these things, based around um, goalkeeper, just your general YouTube and stuff, Start looking at the physical and the psychological sides. Just focus on that. Focus on the determination. Focus on the commitment. Focus. Let's start looking at your agency. How does this guy get to dive up and run? Left and right, left and right, left and right, make saves. La la la. Getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down. Now we're starting to work in some energy systems there, aren't we? There's training in some energy systems there to get that improvement. Yeah? Let's have a look at it. I'm just going to take a quick toilet break. Keep that, keep an eye on it. about the why did you become a keeper or many keepers will tell you they love the look on the striker's face when they make that say that the striker is so confident it's going to go in the net so is a bit of ego in that probably yes but it's being able to be that effective in the game changing the game the mental aspects, the winning mentality, not wanting to concede, what these guys will do to not let that ball in the net. Take the technical side out, out of it, you know what I mean? I'm just talking about determination, I'm talking about commitment, 
doing that bravery, throwing themselves into places, I would do it. Going back to the psychological aspect, theory, theory one. I, I won't wrap it on too much about it. So I want you to watch this video. This is Tim Howard. You saw him before being interviewed in another little school you saw. Uh, this is a game played uh, for USA uh, against Belgium in the 2012 World Cup. He set a world record in this game. Was it 16? No. 16? 15? more than 16. Beautiful. Okay, have a look.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they did lose. Oh. And bear in mind, the Belgian powerhouse, USA, not so. So it was obviously very one-way track. So, all right, so 16. Now that's a world record here, yeah, that's said it there. And it was, it was a fantastic. I remember watching it and, and look, goalkeepers have those days where they're invincible, agree with them. And then you have those days where you just can't do nothing. So these things happen. And I can show you so many reels of goalkeepers making errors, it's not funny, and how it included. So what I want you to do now, we're going to show you again. Now take notes, get pens out, whatever you want to do. I need you to tell me how many of these saves were made. All right? Now there's low saves. If you haven't got pens, I've got some pen pens here. Low saves, shot stopping central. You know what that means? You know what shot stopping central means? Shots that come right down from the center. Shots at angles that want to come from the side, yeah? Block saves, 1v1, shots from distance. They may be the same, took over bar distribution. One I haven't got in there, crosses. Crosses, high balls, all right? Okay. Can you add that in there as well? Do you need a pen? Right, sorry, I got Anyone need pens? Too bad you thought you were going to get out of work, huh? Too bad. Pardon? Too bad you thought you were going to get out of work. Better than math. Better than math? Are you doing this, then? All right, are we good to go? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's good to go. Let's watch it again. Low saves. Low saves. Quickly, how many? Four or five. Five, anyone else? Four. Four, five, that's okay. Just move it down. Shot stopping central. Shot stopping central. 
One? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of shots coming in from Central, I think. Three? Three? Three, four? Three, four? Shot stopping angles. Come on, you guys who've been writing down, I need to hear other other voices. Crosses. Clap stacks. Bear in mind, a clap stack could be from a shot, these could double up. Does that make sense? They shot centrally, you made a clap stack, they're two things. They could be doubled up. How many club stages did you say? Yeah. Anyone else? Two? Yeah. Blocks. Two. One v ones. Six. 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 We had six. six. That's fine. Six. This is no right or wrong answers. Shots from distance. Again, that could be saying a central or whatever. Shots distance. Anyone? Five, beautiful. Tip over the bars. I know there's only one of these. Beautiful. Distributions. One. Only once? Alright. How many saves overall? I can about 16. So. Now, this is what we're going to go through, yeah? Do we agree there were multiple low saves, shots and shot centers, shots angles, crosses in one, multiple clap saves, blocks, 1v1s, distance, and tip over the bar one to have. This is what I need to get. This is a psychological thing I need you to get into your head. This is something you need to apply to anything you do in life. This is specifically for keeping. This is how it needs you to manage situations in a game or manage situations in a training session where you need to push yourself, where you need to, remember I said about that psychological loading, where you need to go up a level. This is one way you can improve yourself, yeah? So I'm gonna tell you now, low saves, you only save one. So you have shot stopping central, there was only one. Only one. Shot stops an angle, there was one. Crosses, he only did one. Clap saves, he only did one clap save. Anyone believe me yet? Blocks, he only did one. 1v1s, one guess how many he did? One. one. Shots at distance? One. 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 Tip over the bar, yeah, there was one, I'm going to argue that one. Distributions, only one. What I'm trying to say to you is, let me explain it to you. Let's take 1v1s was the highest number of six. Yeah? Let's just take that as an example. I said there was only one. How many 1v1s did he have to worry about at any one time? One. He's only got to, that guy's running at him. All he has to do is worry about what he's going to do once. Not the four he's done before. Not the 20 he may have to do coming up. All he has to do mentally, physically, technically, tactically, is worry about how many things. One. Simple as that. Blocks. Guy's running in, he's just got to execute that block how many times to get it right? Once. He's only got to do it once. Clap says, he's only got to do it once. Ball comes in, I've got to do everything right. I want to parry that ball a mile. And he did one where he got a big parry on the ball, pushed it miles away. How many times does he have to worry about that? Once. So can you appreciate that? And I'm trying to be too corny with this because it is pretty simple, yeah? The theory of one works on the cycle aspect that you only ever need to deal with one goalkeeper action at any one time. Simple as that. How many crosses do you get to get in a game? How many crosses do you have to worry about in a game? One. one. The next cross is the one you've got to be concerned about. Breath blows for a corner. Yeah? Corner. How many corners do you have to worry about? One. One. Set up for it properly. Get everyone marked up. Get your position right. Nice and aggressive. Front foot. Come for it, punch it, catch it. How many, I'm dealing with it how many times? Once. Once. I could have dealt with nine crosses before that. I missed three of them. I've come and I've flapped at them. I've missed them. When the next one comes along, how many do I have to worry about? One. Just one. 
Your focus needs to be on the next singular action coming up and not concerned with any previous or upcoming goalkeeper actions. You play, if you saw that game from Belgium, how many corners did they put in? No, no. Actually, how many corners came in? None. There were no corners. How many crosses came in? We know there was one. So Belgium was not a team that was going to do high balls into the box. Agreed or not? So they, you can see, their play was central. A lot of shots at central, a lot of through balls central. Their play was right down the middle of the pitch, which is fine. So what I'm trying to say in that is, is that you will prepare yourself for that game and how it's going to look. And your actions, your one action, is going to be based around that. How are you going to do it? The theory one, if you are doing a repetitive task, a drill or action, and you start to get fatigued, you only need to focus on the next singular action. The example I gave you before, you're going to dive 10 times. Yeah? How many times are you diving? Once. You're only diving once. You've got to find all the energy. You've got to find everything in your system to dive the next time. Then when you finish that, guess what you've got to do? You've got to do it again. You've got to, Don't worry about that one. I'm going to get this one done. Then you worry about the next one. 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 But if, you, if I said to you, you're going to dive 20 times, what's your brain going to tell you straight away? Oh, oh, I'm done already. I can't do this. Dive one at a time. Just worry about one. Just worry about the next one that you have to do. And then if you're tired, find the energy. Suck, suck it in from somewhere. Go into him and go, give me energy. And go do it. I don't care. But you only ever have to worry about one. The next one. Yeah? This is going to happen on the grass in about 10 minutes. This, when you are absolutely knackered from doing 30 seconds of something, and I want one more from you, you find it. Do not tell me. What happens when people tell me they can't do things at my academy? Yeah. That's a nice way of putting it. You will find it. I don't give a shizer where from. You find the energy, you find the ability, you find the determination, and you push yourself and work hard. Has anyone ever died from doing 10 minutes of work? So what's the worst outcome? You're going to get knackered. And you're going to be tired. You're not going to die. So just work. Okay, so doing, again, doing 10 dives. It's not 10 dives. It's one dive. Completed 10 times. Get it in your head. Get it into your head straight away. Has that made a little bit of sense to anyone? Yes. When I was coming through at your ages, at uh, 13, 15, 16, I had a, I didn't have a golf coach, to be really honest. I had a senior keeper that was mentoring me five years older than me, and he would do absolute deep, deep base training. So he would say to me, we're going to dive 10 times to the left. Do you know how many times I dive? 38. Because all he'd do when I was on the ground and I was not good, he'd go, what did he say? One more. Find it. And there wasn't any technically good about what I was doing. Does that make sense? It was not technically good. What he was working me on, one, he was loading, overloading my energy system, loading it ridiculously, not that, he, not that we knew about anything back then, but what he was doing for me is mentally teaching me the ability of the power of one, just to do one more. You can do one more. It doesn't care what anyone tells you. It doesn't care what your brain tells you. What anyone tells you, you can find it, whatever that bit is, and you can do one more, guaranteed. All right, is there any questions about psychological? I can't do a lot of my normal persona, personality coaching at a school because I'll get in trouble. I can do it in my academy because I can do it in my academy. But I'm gonna push you guys very hard today. It's not great conditions to do it as well. You're gonna be hot, you're gonna be bothered, you're gonna be miserable, yeah? But I want you just to try and get through a little bit of a journey today with this. And work out. So what I'm going to do, we're going to park this now. Go get a drink if you need it. Get what you need. Get your kit on. Uh, I'll meet you out on the grass. Can someone go? Yes. No, you don't mention that. Can someone go get me two bags of footballs out of the cupboard, out of the stores? No, it's open. We need two bags of footballs. I need. Okay. When everyone gets out there, I need you to take it for a very quick warm up. Okay.
Go for a toilet break and then I see you come back two seconds later. I'm like, oh, that's quick. You also said the room next door would be open. So I could go, but 